Welcome back to Enlighten Up for episode 64, A Praying Mantis, The Mandela Effect, and Awakening to Your Soul Mission with Matthew Mornian. Matthew is a energetic healer. He does fantastic work. In fact, he's worked on me just recently, and I have nothing but good things to say about his work. He also is very intuitive and uses tarot readings as a diagnostic tool to assist in discovering where the blocks of energy may be, emotional stress, things that may have happened in the past that are playing forth right now. We're going to talk today about his awakening journey, how that all came to be, how he had been working in the mental health industry for seven years prior to his awakening. We're going to talk about the Mandela effect, timeline shifts, and DNA activation. He's also going to share with us his very first experience with ET contact, and it involves a praying mantis. Uh, Later in the show, we're going to discuss what our primary missions are here on this planet, why our souls have incarnated here, and how our primary missions are all about using our gifts. And then towards the end, we're going to talk about negative entity removals and attacks and why that tends to happen. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode and find out what Matthew has to share with us. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Enlighten Up. I'm Nicole Frolic, and I'm here with Lisa and Brian. And we have, before we get into the show, we have a little announcement uh, that we forgot to mention on our last show, but we've officially opened up our very first t-shirt shop. We know that we've had some really fun sayings come out on some of our episodes, either through our guests or through the mouths of your your hosts here. And so we've decided to put them on some t-shirts and we would love your support. We love your support just from listening to the show and sharing with your friends and family. But in order to uh, give you guys a better product, we've uh, opened this uh, t-shirt store. So if you'd like to support us, we would be so grateful for anything. And they're really fun shirts. So I'm going to leave a link in the bio um, of this actual episode so that if you guys are interested, you want to take a look and a little peruse through the store, you can. Uh, but today we're excited to be joined by another guest, uh, Matthew Mornian. He is a psychic, intuitive empath and shamanic healer specializing in clearing, balancing and removing negative energetic attachments from the body. He integrates the method of energy and tarot reading, hypnosis and energetic extraction that can literally shift your state of being in an amazingly short period of time. He has also been known to remove and clear entities, spiritual attachments and energetic parasites from the body uh, that when done can lead to immediate and powerful personal shifts. So He has a lot to share with us. We're going to talk about timelines. We're going to talk about ET contact. So Matthew, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. So, Well, I'm I'm really excited to have you on here. And um, I've been following you on Facebook and your work, and you really seem to be um, kind of really coming into your own. So I'm really grateful to have you on the show with us. Yeah, thank you so much. It's all about mission activation for a lot of us at this at this stage. So I'm truly honored to be a part of that movement. Thank you. Like activating our own personal mission? Um, I believe it is on both a personal level and on like on like a collective level. People seem to be coming into this stage with what we would call the great awakening, quote unquote, for lack of a better term in the spirit of the moment, in which people seem to be kind of stepping up, stepping into kind of realizing and awakening like a larger purpose. So I would say, yeah, individually on like a collective level as well, definitely. Yeah, Lisa, you've been feeling your mission coming up. Yes, I think just... Recently, the past couple of years, I felt that coming just a complete shift from where I was to where I feel like I need to go and looking for that mission and that purpose, trying to let it unfold. Yeah. So Matthew, how did, um, how did your, um, awakening start? Right. I have a, I have, I might have a very common story. It might be kind of weird. I'm not really sure. But what I can tell you is that I became aware of kind of the greater workings of what was happening within like society right around 2012. And I had a, already a lot of knowledge of kind of like a, a disclosure and ET stuff just based on my own personal 
interest. But right around 2012, I think like a lot of us, uh, I began to have a host of really bizarre experiences and I couldn't really explain what was going on. And I was aware of this woo-woo Mayan calendar shift that seemed kind of cool. But I was going through at the time what I actually thought in the beginning was a mental health crisis in which it felt like just my world was kind of falling apart. And for the next couple of years, I went through this bizarre series of events that basically culminated with, um, I had worked in the mental health industry for about seven years and I had like been a counselor working in uh, like chemical dependency fields and whatnot. And I had been at a homeless uh, fair just trying to do outreach at my work. And this woman was, she had a like a tent set up and they were giving away like a, it was like an energetic, like a blessing on the crown chakra. And this woman asked me if I wanted to have that. And I just didn't, I didn't want to go back to work at the time. And I was like, yeah, I'll let you put your hands on my head for a minute. <laughs> and strangely enough, it's one of those weird things where within 30 days, like my whole entire life began to flip in this weird way. And I had this crazy crown chakra opening. And I almost checked myself into the hospital. I was talking to animals, going through strange consciousness shifts, um, it, it was as if this fabric had been torn open and suddenly I was being just really heavily pushed in a whole new direction. And what's wild is I suppressed that at that stage and it came back again um, in about 2015. It was like this timing burst of like pressure inside of me. And uh, yeah, within a couple of years, I literally walked away from my entire life and began to do this work full time. So it was it was a very sudden and uh, powerful kind of timed event that I think was meant to take place in my life, at least. I can go more into the specifics of that, but I think that's been the case for a lot of us, I would say. Yeah, where there's some crazy event that happens um, and, and an activation. Of, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, I know for me, like it wasn't like, <laughs> I'm I'm glad you guys are finally calling it what it is a mental health crisis. Yeah, oh, it can be. It certainly mirrors that. There was a point within this stage, and I will tell you that there, I would I would be walking down the street, right, and I would see a bird, and literally this bird would tell me, "This is this is no lie." He said, "Go down to the end of the walkway and see the man balancing rocks to get to have him do energy work on you." Or something to that effect. And I remember looking at this bird going, my God, okay, I, this is crazy. This is crazy. I'm crazy. But you know what's wild is I did it. And I walked down to the end of the wall at this place. And there was a guy there. And he had a flyer that said, I do Reiki energy healing. And I hired him to come to my house. And he actually greatly assisted me. So within that madness, within that mental health crisis, there was some wildly like miraculous energetic things that occurred. But yeah, it totally is for a lot of us. So. I feel you. I feel like I've been, <laughs> I've been going through that a little. I haven't had birds tell me to do things, but just in general, some of the crazy feel, things yeah. that I feel like I need to do, or you know, wake well, up. Well, you've had trees. Language. You've had trees talk to you. I have had trees talk to me a little bit. Just you know, feeling the energy from nature more than I ever did before, and feeling its presence, and you know, the light language, waking up speaking light language was. Kind of oh, that's a beautiful thing. Kind of made me feel like I was going a little bit crazy. But and what happened after that? Just you know, you're trying to balance 3D and 5D. It's just it's hard for a while. It does feel like you're having a mental breakdown, which I'm pretty oh sure I God. am sometimes. Yeah, I, I think I did yesterday. I don't know. <laughs> like it just seems like it's ongoing sometimes. Um, it's like a roller coaster ride lately. Yeah. Yeah. So you're okay. So you had this awakening. What you talked about timeline changing for you. Yeah, this is a thing. Yeah, this is. And it's also a very difficult, touchy and like a bizarre thing to attempt to explain in the 3D body from our current perspective here in this realm. But I believe myself and, you know, several other people that I know, um, probably you guys as well, and I think on like a like a collective level, massively within the past few months, in which we've had this opportunity to literally shift timelines, and I think there's opportunistic points that occur in our lives that actually will happen along with astrological alignments, like an eclipse per se, that will allow us this sort of portal and astrological or energetic window that, with done with the right intention, with the specific sort of repetition, the energy, the 
whatever it is behind it can allow us to kind of shift into another state of being. So I think for me, the way that I characterize or kind of describe the timeline shift has been an act of kind of stepping entirely into a new version of, of the self. And I think a lot of us, when we talk about a timeline shift, we will still attach this mental idea that we're going to jump into a time machine and go to 88 miles you know, yes. per hour. <laughs> and some crazy thing like that, when 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 actually time is, is literally a sentient, flowing, liquid thing that moves in and out and is constantly changing. And um, I think when we embody the vibration of a thing or a person or a movement and experience or an encounter with the right intention at the right times, we can literally step into that version. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the way I've been kind of uh, describing it lately. Well, let's ask our skeptic. Does it make sense to you? Well, yeah, on paper, it makes sense. I mean, it's it's about practice and intention. You know, do I believe you can do that? No. So can I understand what you're saying? Yes. I mean, there's, it's, it's what side of the looking glass are you on? What color are the glasses that you're wearing? What do mm. I see? What do I experience? Do I think I can do that? Absolutely not. There's no doubt in my mind that I don't think I can do that. Do you think you can do that? Absolutely no doubt in your mind that you believe you can do that. Who's right? Prove it. Can't. Either way. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I absolutely. You know what? I, I okay, totally well, feel wait, you. Nicole, Nicole's laughing like she can prove it. Prove it. I can't prove my side, but you laugh like you can prove your side of the point. I don't understand your laugh sometimes because you you laugh like, oh, my God, you're just living. And it's like, oh, my God, you're living off the earth. And so, so Matthew, Brian and I are like brother and sister and I, <laughs> and I trigger him a lot. <laughs> so, um, no, the reason why I'm laughing is because I feel like the Mandela effect proves that. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just my opinion, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I would say the Mandela effect is a very good kind of generalized, like a collective indicator of the simple ways in which timelines can change or little details will shift. I would say the best way that I would be able to demonstrate that phenomenon in my own life would be through describing this sort of path that I was on in which I was going in one uh, a direction, kind of working in the mental health industry, towing uh, the line of, you know, marriage and family and like a career. And when I begin to feel this greater sort of calling or this nudge in my life backed up with a whole bunch of other sort of uh, energetic a momentum, I found that I was able to, in the right sort of method, in the right ways, which were specific to me, step into that new role of Matthew. And I think that a lot of us still hold on to this idea that a so-called timeline shift would be like transporting ourselves into this other world, when in reality, we're just stepping into another role, another version of us. So I think it's more about like a behavioral shift, a vibrational shift, an emotional shift, a physical shift. And when all those things are done in like conjunction with each other in a specific time period, it allows us to kind of absorb ourselves and kind of move and just gently glide into this other state of being. And for some people, that's a very drastic shift. In my case, it's quite literally possible to look at pictures of me on Facebook for the past two years and then literally look at a version of me from only a year ago and see that there has been a great physical change. And I think a lot of us have encountered people in our in our lives and we in which we've watched that physical change as well. So those are just some of the little signs and signals that we look out. But, but that doesn't you're about mean a something. timeline has shifted. That just you're means absolutely that right. person has gone through a change in their life and something has, has yep. changed. And you're talking about being able, you know, for an individual to shift timelines versus, mm -hmm. you know, the, the Mandela effect assumes the entire world shifted timelines. Collective. Community. And, it certainly and, does. And, and, and I don't think everybody experiences it. I don't think everyone remembers Mandela dying in pr prison. I mean, I understand, you know, stand the effect. I don't remember it. So the entire population, less 10%, 50%, whatever it is, shifted and didn't shift. You know, it can also just be easily proved. You know, you said the Mandela effect proves it. To me, it proves, you know, memory is not rock solid. You know, we mm -hmm. don't remember what we think we remember. Oh, That's yeah. a 
possibility. But, okay, but okay, I understand that. But then how do you explain when, you know, like for instance, in um, like the, the Tom Hanks movie, like Forrest Gump, where he's like, one word is changed in the box of chocolates and you have it in one video, but then in the newly released video, it's not like that anymore. Or if you remember like, uh, what is it called? Um, have you like, ever played the, 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 the game as a child, they, they call it telephone or something like that. And all the kids sit in a circle mm-hmm. and the teacher whispers something yeah. to the first kid and they whisper it to the kid. It's a very simple game. Everyone says yeah, the exact same, same thing, same. but by the time it comes around, it's different. Well, but you're, you're, you're talking about a movie. Oh, I remember. Do you remember exactly no, there's, every there's word old, in a movie? There's old like VHS tapes of the movie. Back in the day, but they saying cha- the one thing. But the 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 studios change things. You you look at the what, Star Wars that was released, and the Star Wars you buy today is different. They decided they very intentionally decided to make changes to the movie when they released it on DVD. The thing it's like even Chick Fil A. It used to be Chick Fil A or Jif Peanut Butter Jiffy. Yeah. You remember yeah. them being Jiffy and mm-hmm. and people remember these things. There's pictures of these things the way it used to be, but the companies themselves say no, that was never our logo. We didn't yeah. change it. That's the thing. They're saying no, we didn't change it. The studio's saying no, we didn't change it. It's just always been this way. And people are saying no, it wasn't this way. There's many people who remember things being different. Remember, and that's and my have, point. And have and have paraphernalia showing that it was different. Exactly. Like you have, you have people who have literal proof, like objects in their hands to show you the label. And there's companies saying, no, it was never that. It's like, whoa, I'm holding it in my hand. And that's, so it's not memory. It's not all memory. There is proof. So, um, and I, but, you know, going back to the point of the whole timeline thing, like you said, um, Matthew, uh-huh. there's this idea that when you'd say timeline you do think like you're going back in time or you're there's like you said like a space machine like a time machine like is involved somehow and because you know when lisa and i were still trying to understand timelines that was also something that was in my mind and now i'm understanding that it's not that at all and that you have an opportunity to be on a time like you could have been on a timeline that would just have continued in the mental health profession and all of that. But you chose a timeline that is more of your higher potential. And so your whole life shifts because of it. I don't yeah, I think it's I, normal. I mean, it feels like it's a normal thing to me, like it's been going on since the beginning of time, but maybe people are just more aware of it now or paying attention. I agree. I would say overall, and this goes back to like, like a collective energy. I think it's really easy for us to look at things like, uh, like the Mandela effect or even just our friends and family and the wild shifts that we've all gone through as just one of the little signs or pieces in which we could describe the phenomenon of an overall timeline shift. Um, I, I can say this much. I think in the future, and by the future, who knows when that is, it will end up being something quite different when we talk about the phenomenon of moving into timelines or missions or identities or activation. Who knows? We'll end up understanding it as something else. But at least at this point, experientially, this has been the best way that I can describe my sort of activation and stepping into what I'm meant to do right now. And I think sometimes, even if we're unable to explain the exact methods of the hows and whys or how we get there, it's the signs that we look at or the success or the effect that it has on the people in our life that show us that even if we may be mistaken about exactly what it is we've gone through, we have this evidence that says, I'm doing something right. So when I look at all the details of that in my personal case, I'm grateful to say in the future, hey man, I didn't shift timelines. I might've just stepped into this other version of Matthew. But one thing I can tell you is that something amazing seems seems to be happening. And I'm watching this effect happen for the people that I work with and other people around me. So no matter what it is, I'm very grateful to be a part of it. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> so, a, yeah. that's a great way to look at it. Because at the end of the day, it yeah. doesn't even matter. You know, yeah. it doesn't even matter why, you know, as long as you are stepping into the best version of yourself. Thank you for finally right. yeah. seeing what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. Just enjoy um, where you are and right. quit worrying about the why. There you go. There you go. I, we're not worried about it. I think it's just we're interested in it. 
it fascinates yeah. us. It's not so much a worry. It's just, it, it's a thing, you know, we understand that time is an illusion and we like to look at those types of things and analyze them. That's all. We're not mm. worried about it. I'm not yeah. worried. I will say there has been a bit of existential angst for myself in that process though, because I, I, I think some other people will kind of echo this feeling in that I think within the sort of awakening process that a lot of us go through and understanding who and what it is we're supposed to do next, there does seem to be a fair amount of worry that occurs along that path of like, what am I doing? Where am I going? Especially right when we're about to make really big jumps or leaps in our kind of like our like activation path. And I don't know, I would say there's been many times in which I, I have been very, very worried and overly like consumed with, you know, like all of that stuff. So I definitely feel you, Brian. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm right, I mean, and I, <laughs> I'm right there. I with agree you. with that as well, Matt. I mean, I have been, I try not to worry, but I guess it is a form right. of worry, you know, wanting, wondering where I'm going, what I'm doing, why I'm, I can't, be focused anymore because I'm literally feel like I've, been, I've morphed into this other being who I don't quite know and understand yet. So it's oh, yeah. a little scary. Like I, you know, when you're getting, when you've been shifted over to a different part of yourself or a better version of yourself or whatever it may be. Yeah. It's a scary transition, but you know, it happens to the best of us, I guess. I think they just call it life. Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. DNA activation as well. That's that's another big thing that I think is occurring for a lot of us, which is <laughs> an equally impossible thing to kind of like quantify and explain in the 3D kind of Western physical realm when we talk about a DNA activation and like the level to which that can help us awaken to our uh, multi dimensional nature. That's another, that's, it's like a difficult, uh, like pill to swallow. So it is, you know, so to say, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with I'm, you guys. I'm so. going to guess that, yeah. that Nicole and I had the same thought when she chuckled because I thought <laughs> yes. one 900 activate my DNA. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you can. I would love that service. <laughs> No, it exists. It actually exists. <laughs> oh, wait, really? Oh no, my God. Not, no, but not in the way that Brian said Not it. the it one nine hundred came... part, but you can't. I did have yeah. my DNA activated and it was within about three or four weeks that I started speaking light language after I had my DNA activated yeah. and that everything, you know, I had already made a lot of changes in my life, but it, I felt like it took me to a different level. Yeah. Me, I had my DNA activated and for six weeks straight, I felt nothing but pure joy every day. And it was like I was attracting all these amazing opportunities and I just, I, I couldn't believe it. It was just the most unreal thing. To, I have to never do. had my DNA activated and I live in a state <laughs> of bliss and joy. Maybe you were born activated. Maybe was. Yeah, maybe, there you go. Maybe, maybe I am... What? The well, king? I know. <laughs> okay, so I'm curious to know, Matt. Um, I really want to know about your ET contact experience. Right. Yeah. This is yeah. This is a, this is a bit of a story as well. I, I I can tell you that by my understanding, I think it's been an ongoing thing that's been occurring in my family at least for the past couple generations because my my. Uh, maternal grandfather had a lot of odd stories and he did work um, on a base in New Mexico during, I believe, the 1970s. Um, I don't know that he did anything really specifically scientific or high end, but he did have a lot of strange experiences as a result of that. So I was turned on to that phenomenon early on in my life. But I have to tell you, I'm one of those people that up until the age of, I believe, about 38 years old, I never had a dream of an extraterrestrial. I never had a dream of a spacecraft. I never had any signs or anything in my life that told me I was having an, an experience. What I did have was an incredible interest in this draw into that area. But I was very conscious of never having had that experience. Um, what happened in, I believe this was uh, Oct October or November of 2000, uh, 2016, I was uh, like meditating um, in my living room, just, you know, hanging out, like meditating on a Saturday afternoon. 
Um, and I was face to face with a gigantic, um, a praying mantis being instantly appeared in my home and, and it literally right in front of my face. And, uh, within that second, there was no fear. There was, there was just this acknowledgement and there was actually this feeling in all honesty that they were proud of me, that I was being like congratulated. There was this feeling of joy. And as soon as I looked at this being, um, I asked, you know, just in my mind, who are you? What are you? And, and it immediately turned into a boy, uh, what I would imagine about 17 or 18 years old, very dark skin, reddish, dark skin, maybe Indian with very black, long hair. He had like red bands around his forearms. He was wearing some kind of a native thing. And he he too is just smiling, just beaming at me with this incredible joy and love. And this experience lasted maybe only a few seconds. Um, and within that space, I asked, who are you? What are you? And the name I heard was Ezekiel. Um, and it was gone. Um, and it just faded away. And um, for the about, I would say about 48 hours or a few days after that, it was as if my body was in this chemical state of bliss. It, as if, it was as if something had been injected into me and I was like flowing and moving in this state of love and like wholeness that I hadn't, I don't know that I had ever felt really ever. Um, and it just stayed with me for a couple of weeks. And I had the, the acknowledgement of that being, and I didn't tell anyone at the time because, you know, I was, I was married. My wife wasn't really into that stuff. No one I knew, you know, I had been taught by reading things on Facebook and on watching YouTube that that's not how ET things occur, that they pick you up in the night and they make <laughs> this crazy agreement with your higher self and you're only allowed to, you know, have a contact experience in this way. And so it was difficult for me to reconcile that experience based off of the disinformation and programming I had. And so I literally sat with it for about six Can I months, ask what your, I what your relationship is with open? opioids and hallucinogens? Yes, you absolutely can. That's a very, very good question. Um, so from 1995 to 1999, I was heavily addicted to heroin and cocaine, uh, living on the streets at times, in and out of jails and institutions for a period of years. And it was a very particular soul contract that I had that stated I was meant to go through a period of very heavy self-imposed uh, sickness, addiction, and isolation. Um, so I do have a very heavy past uh, experience with drugs, not alcohol, but definitely drugs in the early 90s. And I got sober primarily um, in, two, in the year 2000. Um, I remained that way for many years um, up until I'd say the mid, I would say around like 2013, I began uh, smoking pot at times or using like mushrooms here and there. But what's wild is all of these experiences that I had had with these beings at this time happened at these crazy intervals in strange mornings or afternoons in which I was totally sober in this random moment in which something seemed to strike or just show up. So I absolutely feel your question on that. That's a very, that's a very legitimate place to go, but I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I wanted to know when you saw the praying mantis and the boy, were you seeing with your physical eyes or your third eye? Um, this is in a, what I would call, what I now understand as a construct um, in which the physical, our physical body's eyes are closed, but our visual aspects, um, our feeling, um, our sort of the sphere of energy around us seems to be contained in this sort of visual space in which we're not there, we're within like an astral, I guess we could say realm, so to speak. So one of the ways we could describe that would even be like a vision um, that would be one of the ways, but I think vision doesn't really on any level accurately describe like the content and the substance of these types of types of experiences. And I think for those of us that may eventually listen to this or hear this, or maybe some like you guys as well, there seems to be another sort of level of this interaction that occurs in which you're kind of taken to this place for this split moment. And we're just talking about seconds. It's just a second, this burst of thing that occurs. I don't know if that answers your question. I can relate to that because when I saw a negative entity in my room at the end of last year, or early this year, I can't remember the exact date, but, um, I felt like I was seeing it with my physical eyes. Like it felt like that, but I don't know if my eyes were open or not. Right. Right. I feel you. I, I, I think those are some of the signs um, of a higher 
dimensional interaction. And, that, and I think those are the moments in which we can acknowledge that we're using that extra sensory sight because it's an experience that seems to take place completely outside of the set of physical senses that we have. And yet it, it may encompass and involve all of those group of senses as well. And yet this whole other ingredient that's very difficult to place. And I think that's why for a lot of us, when we have these bizarre out of body experiences or crazy mystical things, we tend to always disregard it, push it down or throw it away as something because it's so difficult to pinpoint the actual sensation of what that was. Um, yeah. So yeah. It's you. interesting that you said that you had that in October, 2016, because that was during October, 2016, I had a major um, activation happening for me as well. Um, yeah, probably right around the end of the month, right? It, yeah, it was somewhere in October. And I remember <laughs> yeah. I was um, lying, I had got, I was starting to learn all of this stuff about Atlantis. And I was, I remember having a very, very, very vivid dream of being at the gates of Atlantis. And I heard a transmission coming through. And I got a message and I woke up drawing circles on my bed with my right hand. Like I was drawing something. It was like I was writing something out on my bed and I was trying to remember what the transmission was. I grabbed my phone to like voice record it. But as soon as I was trying to do it, it was already gone. Oh man. So I totally, that's, that's that was a huge activation time for me as well. Oh wow. Yeah. They're giving you some sort of like symbology or something. How about yeah, you, Lisa, well. 2016, I wonder what those symbols October. are. I'm trying to remember, but I, nothing specific comes. I mean, it's, I feel like I had a lot going on from October, 2016 till now that I can't really keep track of mostly mental health issues <laughs> 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 or what feels like it. Um, yeah. So, wow. So that was your ET contact. Yeah, that was, that was the first of uh, honestly a few. Um, my understanding is that this is a, a, like a continuing thing that is happening for a lot of us, you know, right now. In my case, it was just the first of many. There was a month later where um, I was at a group uh, meditation and I was visited by another mantis being. Um, and on and on kind of after that, it appeared as if I would have these experiences w in which I would be briefly sort of greeted by this form or this thing. And it would sort of look at me and then it would just kind of take off. And all of these things kind of built up over this, I would say, between late 2016 and summer 2017, in which I just kept having these sporadic, strange experiences. And it all kind of led up to this one like jumping off point in which I kind of stepped into the role in which I'm in now where um, it was about summer last year. I think this was uh, about July um, of last year, July 28th to be exact. Um, I had made the choice to literally quit my job. I had a career. I left my marriage. I had literally put some things on the curb. Everything that I owned was in my car. Um, and I moved and I took off. And I had made that choice to literally step entirely into what I was being guided to do as a result of these telepathic and kind of whether they be ET extra dimensional or whether they even be, you know, something that I created within Matthew's own psyche to assist me in my development, whatever the explanation for that was, um, I was given a series of uh, like suggestions and advice. And I was told that it was possible for me to step into this role. I was told that I had this other calling. They literally told me I had a mission. They said that if I wanted to step into it, I had to be willing to let some things in my life go to allow things that no longer served me to go. Um, and I, you know, when I made the choice to actually listen to that and step into it, I can say miracles occurred in my life that since even to this very day, I'm watching them unfold. And I'm saying, you know, Matt, even if you were crazy, even if this was something that was created in your head or, you know, however, you know, modern world likes to like, you know, call it, you did something right. And so I think with that, I think that on some level, I would hope that would assist anyone else going through a similar bizarre, bizarrely transformative process to kind of embrace that and to go with it, especially when, you know, family and the world and people around you are like, dude, you're crazy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yet sometimes we are crazy. So, you know, there's a whole other side to that. Are you well, happy? But... It's 
Oh, you know, honestly, I can tell you beyond any shadow of a doubt. And, and like for those of us out there that are empathic, I can tell you that I'm happier now. I'm more comfortable in the skin and this human body than I've ever been at any point in this incarnation. I think that I was given this gift to live a truly, truly amazing life. And I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful for it. So I yes, think that's all that similar. matters, you know, regardless of what society yeah. thinks or if you made mistakes or any of that. I think what's important is how you feel about yourself. How are how are you oh, using absolutely. that? I mean, what you you it kind of sounds like it's a it's a gift to you. So how are you using that um, gift? Oh, specifically, yeah. yeah, I can tell you on a day. My primary mission at this time, as it relates to what Matthew's doing in this body, involves um, the removing. I would say at this time of negative emotion from uh, the body. And uh, we do this by opening the energy flow, the chi flow in our meridians and like energy centers. And what I find is when we do that, we can allow ourselves to release years and years of blocked up trauma, blocked up emotion. Um, we can kind of rebalance. We can literally create activations within the body that can lie dormant as a result of hemi, heavy like trauma that exists. So I would like to say that I'm using this stuff to just like awaken and heal the body mind template, you know, like process for, you know, whoever I can come in contact with. And that said, you know, sometimes that comes in the form of energetic healing. Sometimes that comes in the form of an intuitive reading. Um, the work that I'm doing seems to be taking a lot of different forms right now. And I'm just kind of like flowing with it. Um, but yeah, I would I would like to say I'm, overall, I'm kind of using this to help awaken and heal the same, you know, to uh, rather help awaken and heal people that are going through the same process. My lovely so wife is this. struggling with some past energy and that sounds great for her is it can we do that <laughs> oh absolutely um yeah i would say um let's see we can even do a little bit of a uh, if you guys are into I, this I, I don't know if i should just Lisa be to this other, but yeah we can do a little this. bit of like an energy reading on yeah. Okay. Awesome. So Lisa, if, if you are willing, one of the cool things that I like to do in my work is we have this ability to kind of tap into each other's consciousness by using these really fun and imaginative little kind of visual and mental cues. And so in my work, what I'll teach people is one of the ways in which we can allow the free flow of psychic or telepathic extrasensory information between two bodies is very simple. And so Lisa, if you're willing, what I'd like you to do, if you have your eyes closed is just take a deep breath in. And as you take that breath in, just imagine you're going to gently unlock and open your front door. And just crack it. Leave it just a little bit open. Because everyone knows what the doorknob looks like. They know how to unlock their door. They can instantly remember and visualize those things. And so as we do that, and just see that door open just a little bit, and you can acknowledge that we're opening that door to allow the flow of energetic and emotional psychic information. Then you can just go ahead and breathe it away and just acknowledge that we've done that. And so as we do that, it kind of creates this interesting little doorway between two consciousness. So we're going to use that information, that little pathway now, to do a little bit of a reading on Lisa and just see what comes up in terms of our, her energetic condition. So um, I'll just throw out some cards here. And we shall see what comes up. Here we go. Okay. Well, if there's anything I can tell you right now, Lisa, your first card that comes out, and just to explain, oftentimes when I'm doing a reading or a session, whether that be clearing or just an intuitive reading with people, I like to use tarot as kind of like a diagnostic tool, um, not necessarily for you know the sole purpose of reading kind of intuitive information through tarot, but I think tarot will give us a lot of indications of where energy is affecting the body, what it can mean, and specifically the areas we would look in order to kind of resolve release trauma, remove hooks, kind of uh, sometimes toxic cords that we share with loved ones. And that's a key word, toxic cords that we share with uh, loved ones, because at least right now, the first and most obvious thing that comes up for you, Lisa, is going to be within the heart and solar plexus chakra. And I believe that if there's any sort of, um, if there is a difficult or past emotional resonance that exists within your body, it's going to be um, primarily within solar plexus. And that's going to have to do with 
um, what feels like a bit of a toxic and resentive thread that you may share with uh, what looks like family of origin on mom's side and then how that spreads through into what feels like the primary relationship that you have. And so I might be over-interpreting the energy that shows up for you, but it feels like kind of a bit of a, just like an emotional buildup that's right now primarily placed within the center of your belly in the uh, solar plexus region. And that kind of does spread up into the heart. Um, and, and the evidence that I have for this, just to let you know, often will come in the form of the two of cups, which is very indicative in tarot of the heart chakra connection, the energy flow through the heart, the energy flow up through the body. Um, and so that'll just indicate also some of the areas in which that would be attached to. So that's why we address primary, you know, relationships, familial, uh, relationships. Um, so those are the first things that come through and that's very, very easy, uh, very, very easy to clear in most cases. So I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah, I actually have a back pain and it's weird the past. I've had it for, it started a couple years ago and it's kind of been up and down, but I noticed about two weeks ago, it really, it felt like I got kicked in the back and it's literally like right behind my belly button mm. on my spine. And I wake up and I'm, it just, my spine hurts. Yeah. <laughs> You might to and, me you feel and like right on the money about the 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 maternal line yep. childhood. Oh, yep. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I've been feeling. I told Nicole last week. I feel like my mother's energy is like draped on me. Oh, it definitely, it definitely can be. And it's funny your choice of keywords that you use because one of the things we look at, especially when we'll have a like a family attachment or just kind of some karmic weight that we'll carry from our family of origin, it oftentimes will appear as this sort of drape or a shroud of kind of heavy emotion that hangs over the shoulders or will be pulled around the back. Or in some cases, when it's like a financial sort of attachment or something that can affect abundance where kind of one person in the family will carry all of that like abundance karma for everyone it can literally be like these shackles these energetic shackles that get placed around our ankles and our wrists um so yeah no you're 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 actually describing an energetic uh, phenomenon and and just so you know that comes through in your reading here as i'm putting cards out we have the six of cups which is that like inner child we have this queen of pentacles which in a lot of cases will illustrate the mother card I would say we do also have a six of swords for you, which is, I would say, a really cool card because that will get, that will indicate at least right now you seem to be on a very kind of um, a firm process of development and movement in a particular direction. And the six of swords will tell you, especially right now, that if there's uncertainty about what you've been feeling and where you've been going, it's very important to have faith. That's a faith card. It will tell you to keep moving. Um, so I hope that makes sense. But. Yes, it does. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so um, Matthew worked on me yesterday, just so the audience knows. And we did a lot of like energy clearing. Um, and I, I think like I had been getting headaches into the left side of my head. And as soon as you started working on the, the left side of my head, the temple, the gallbladder, um, it's like everything just opened up. And it felt so light. It felt literally like there was shining light coming out of my head. Um, just super, super light. And then I felt as you were working on it, I felt, oh my God, the right side of my head is so heavy. It felt like my head was tipping over to the right. Like it was like, like my right ear was like going towards my right shoulder. And then I didn't say anything to you and you're like, okay, now we're going to work on the right side. And I was so happy that you did. And you just seem to know, just as I started to feel something where I felt the energy move, like, you know, you just would say, okay, now it's moving to your spleen. And I felt it move. Like when we were talking, when you were talking about the energy in the solar plexus and you're like, it's now moved to your spleen, literally like half a second before he said it, I felt all this energy rush over to my spleen on the left side. And it was just really cool how intuitively um, connected you were uh, to everything. I can, everything that you were saying, I could feel. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I I believe that is uh, the phenomenon of kind of embracing not only the higher self uh, like connection when we're able to like communicate on a soul and like energetic level. Um, I think it's also embracing the frequencies of, of the density shift that we're all in as we move into the fourth uh, density. I think we find that especially in situations like this, there's no gap in the communication of information. Everything is known. Everything is felt. When we fully embrace that like 
future version of ourselves. And yes, that's a very loaded statement. I believe that's the stage in which we can allow ourselves to begin feeling, working with, transmuting, moving energy through other people's bodies. I would say if, if there's people out there that are interested in understanding how we do that, the number one way that I think I was able to unlock that sensory thing within myself was through Qigong. And by these simple, wild Chinese, like, like meditative exercises that literally open up your body's ability to feel that and like move that energy. And so, yeah, for you, I would say, you know, you had a lot of energy around the head there. And what's wild is for a big portion of my work, I find it's, a, it's very simple to move emotional energy in and out of the crown chakra, out of the sides of the head of the gallbladder is a very hot place carries a tremendous amount of emotional data that lines the sides of the head we have kidney and liver on our head and in our face and uh, the meridians all kind of intersect in these interesting places along the sides of our head so when we move chi and we consciously breathe and we consciously with intention address the energy of emotion and move that through with our breath it literally like takes weights off of a side of one head and then we move to the other side and we breathe through that and it pulls that emotional weight out so that's an amazing, it's an amazing process. And I would say it's equally amazing that you're aware of all of that stuff that was going on. That says a lot about like the work that uh, you have been doing on your own end as well. So, so good job. <laughs> Thanks. And it was also, so, so how do I get, don't go ahead, Nicole. No, I was just going to say, um, it was also really cool because I wanted to share this with everyone uh, that at the end, when you were closing out the whole like healing you said to look over my left shoulder to see my guides or just to acknowledge that they're there. Mm -hmm. And I instantly had a vision of this woman um, in light blue royal garb, like just tons of headdress, beautiful woman, like hair pulled back. And just it, there were so many details and it. it was just instantly there in a flash in my mind. And it was just just really, really cool. Oh, that is so cool. I love it. Yeah. No, that happens. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, so how do I get this mother's drape off me? Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, okay. Well, there, I would say there are a number of ways to do this. And as a clearing practitioner, I'm going to tell you quite obviously the most quickest and fastest way is to, you know, we can, we can do this ourselves with intention. This is literally what I do. Um, but what I would do is kind of focus in on the emotion of that. If I was sitting with you in a session, we would kind of open up the crown chakra and we would begin to, you know, move that energy through and probably directly right around the center of your throat. And sometimes it's difficult to do this within the context of a situation like this, but we can begin to kind of create the sensory seating experience for you. If you choose to go through the conscious breathing and kind of releasing this weight from your body later on. What I would recommend doing is just begin consciously breathing through that space at the center of your throat, that little notch right at the top of your collarbone. And as we do that, we just begin to gently open and kind of awaken that throat chakra. And for you, at least what comes through when I look at your energy in this moment, um, there is a lot of kind of weight placed around the shoulders and that kind of drapes down into your back. And um, you may have a little bit of kidney energy that's that's built up there that can assist you with kind of some anxious responses you may have been having. But where I would start, at least within the context of this situation, would be just really breathing through the throat and allowing something to pass through and open up. And I'd, I would be happy to do a clearing with you um, in the future after this as well. But that would be where I would start just like removing weight and sort of uh, stuff from the shoulders and the throat. I hope that makes sense to you. Yes, of course. So how did you get into tarot? What do you love about tarot? You know, that was a, that's a good question. I can tell you in 2012, when I started having all these weird experiences, my wife's grandmother actually gave me a tarot deck. I had never touched them before in my life. And as soon as I picked this up in 2012, I started doing readings on myself and I would just look up the cards online and I'd be like, whoa, what is this? You know, what do these mean? Why do I keep picking them up? What the hell is going on? And through my own work at the time, I began to kind of do readings on myself and people at my job kind of secretly and 
it, you know, I began to use tarot to such a level that it literally forecasted a series of events that were to come in my life where, you know, it, I was about to make some very weird choices and I would do readings on it and they would tell me, if you do this, horrible things will happen. And I literally disregarded it. And every single thing that I had shown within the course of my readings ended up taking place in my life over the next year. And it was an absolutely horrible, life-changing experience. And I put them down for almost all of 2013. I just wouldn't touch it after like summer 2013 until about 2015 because it had, it just, it was too painful. And I was like, I saw everything coming and I couldn't touch it again. Then right in 2015, I began to work with a woman who began to open up that for me. And she explained, you know, I think she gave me faith in like that I could really do it. And I just began to randomly step into it. I began doing readings like crazy. And I, you know, I also kind of developed my own method, I think, a lot of people will kind of fall into these stereotypes or kind of like typical spreads or archetypes with tarot. And I, I like to encourage people to kind of scry with the cards, to look into the energy of them, to kind of decide your own meanings. And so what I found is with a little bit of instruction, I was able to kind of create my own sort of method, which is a thing that I use up until this point. So um, it's just practice and obsession in my case, I would say. <laughs> you know, yeah. Lisa and I have been using I've been tarot. really interested. Yeah. Yeah, we both have. I bought a new deck and oh, I've been awesome. playing with it every day. Please continue to use it and trust yourself. I would say that's like the number one thing. A lot of times I think we'll have this urge to go pick up a book or to look at something online and that can be very helpful. But I think that for a lot of us, the energy of the cards will show itself to you immediately. And in, in a lot of the work that I do, at least intuitively, when I will try to help people like open up those own processes within myself, is I'll explain that oftentimes we're given the initial burst of information immediately. As soon as we'll see the card, as soon as we'll have an intuitive thought or something that feels like a vision, we have this information instantly. It's already known, but we have to go through this unpacking and filtration process within the human mind. And I think that's where a lot of people tend to go astray. So I would say keep practicing with them and just like trust your instinct, um, which I have a feeling you're pretty good at doing anyway. So I, yeah, and I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say like, uh, I've been noticing like your eyes get pulled to certain things on the cards instantly, like at that time. And that's usually a good hit of what you're supposed to be paying attention to. Oh, it certainly is. I've noticed in your readings, all the videos that you do, Nicole, you're definitely like tuned into that process. You seem to have like a really good kind of handle on your own sort of stream of consciousness version of like whatever you're doing in that. So yeah, no, I'd, I'd say you're, you're like, you're dead on in that uh, regard that was actually how i noticed you i had seen like your like energy forecast and i was like huh she's talking about the exact same things i was thinking about this morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah definitely that's funny yeah i love the the that's my crystal oracle i love that deck for energy readings or just kind of getting more general stuff the tarot i like for more specifics of like what's going on on a more personal level but the crystal cards, I, it's interesting. Like I definitely do get a sense instantly of what's kind of going on. And every time I see the card, it's never the exact same thing, yeah. you know, like yeah. it'll sometimes be a little bit different. Can you do a so, reading for Brian? I, I certainly can. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Did you have any questions, Brian? Is there anything that you would like to ask well, about? You know, you know, it's interesting because Lisa's, getting into this she you know she's just learning what you know some of some of the the me the meanings are you know through two different through two different books and um i asked a question about our current our current company and she she gave me a reading and i and i thought it was interesting because you know we're just looking at what the book says and it was interesting for a couple of reasons it was profound i mean it it was applicable but they were the all they were all the same suit, and I was I was curious. Um, I'd love for you to do a reading, but I, oh, I, yeah. I'm also very curious about what was what was drawn in 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 that moment. And you know, like I said, looking at the book, it 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 meant something. But they also, I mean, I, I thought they were really interesting. They were all um, it was it was a it was a short you know three card pull mm -hmm. like current status problem solution type of you know poll yeah do you do you recall what the cards were i took a picture of it 
They oh, were all nice. wands. It was the king of okay. wands, the two of wands, go. and the knight of wands. We're oh, starting a new company, so we there's a lot of challenges that come with this endeavor. We're yeah. developing developing an app and you know, a lot of pitfalls and scary things that we've never done. So we seek guidance on like And are you guys the primary partners with Oh yes. Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. so that's perfect for two of wands. That's literally the I mean that's the exact well, wow, that's wild. So yeah, like the two of wands will often indicate like the basis of that partnership. That's that those are the wands there. The wands also being the realm of physical movement, activity, our jobs, things we, you know, like we're doing with our hands, that's the realm of wands. So that would indicate um, especially with King of Wands, when that guy tends to come out in the beginning, and I don't want to kind of like override or whatever kind of your purpose of the reading was, but if it was me and I was getting the King of Wands as a primary representative in a question about the viability of someone's business path going forward, I think the King of Wands would just add a little bit more information telling me to be very actively not only moving toward a thing that I want, but to really have your hand out in a certain sense. And that can be kind of counterintuitive to some people that would look at the energy of the King of Wands, but King Kings and tarot in general will seem to indicate a very high level of like whatever that suit is. And when we look at the king and queen of wands, they're often depicted as being younger, less experienced, or sometimes in a state of need more so than the other kings and queens and tarot. So oftentimes they'll be depicted as standing or in a slightly different physical posture. And so what that will indicate is if we're moving toward a new thing, we need to be very physically active in seeking the things that we need. In conjunction with two of wands, when we see that, that'll tell you the active force kind of moving within that agreement. And that's that partnership. Oftentimes two of wands will indicate a man or a person holding a map or like a globe, Mm -hmm. the world Uh in their hands. That will indicate like a needing to take a control like dominion it'll indicate that you have a path forward but that you need to be very directive in your energy and then what was the final card that you guys had there the knight of wands knight of wands is also in just he's also an interesting guy he's very very actively moving towards something that he needs that he wants he's telling you to pounce directly on an opportunity in many cases he will say move directly towards go rushing in there with that wand which is both good and bad because in tarot there's always this downside to every card um and the only downside of knight of wands which for you guys could show up in like a particular a, a position would be um, they tend to run in and then they will very quickly run out. They can, at their best, they're a heroic, fast moving, fiery energy of the moment, opportunistic energy that's able to get things done. And at their worst, they can be inconsistent and they'll rush in and rush out. And we're not really sure what they're doing. So I don't know if that makes sense it, to you. It, it, it does. It does. I'd, I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to put the same question or idea forward to you. You know, we're, yeah, yeah, we're, we're just at this point in the company finishing a pitch deck and having a demo. And we're at the very crucial and difficult stage of raising money, you know, pitching to investors and getting them to, you know, love the idea with us. So, you know, along those, along those lines of, you know, what do we need to do? What do I need to focus on? That kind of. Yes. So what's, give us a name of your company or just give us a label for what we could call it. What is it? Uh, The name of the company is Blue Dot. Blue Dot. All right. So we are going to, so if, if uh, you guys are ready, you can even just kind of take a deep breath in uh, together just clearing the energy of the moment and just exhale that all the way out. We're going to reach out to the guys responsible for the care and management of the body, mind, soul complexes of those present here. And today we ask for information, guidance, suggestions, whatever they need to know about the viability of blue dots or this current business plan as it pertains to whatever they're trying to create, what they need to know about that. And we ask that you impart this information to us in a way that's simple and easy to understand for those of us in physical bodies. All right, let's see. Okay, so, ooh, interesting. So the first guy that comes out for you guys today is the magician, and then secondly, the high priestess. So for those of us familiar with tarot, those are two really powerfully activated, very quick-moving, very interesting cards. Wow, you guys have a hell of a lineup today. Okay, so from the start, whatever this is that's happening here is illustrated as uh, the magician. So straight up that's a very powerful beautiful thing to be right next to the magician is the high priestess if we're talking about partnerships if we're talking about moving towards something that would appear to be in alignment with the soul's journey 
an overall mission, a, an accumulation or a buildup of experiences over time and how they transform us through a new thing we are doing. We're talking about the magician and the high priestess. And so we have both the male archetype and the female archetype coming out for you guys in that sense. So um, interestingly enough, I will tell you those are both amazing cards, but they're also frightening because they can, they, can, they can get really weird as well. Um, I would say that it looks like things are going well. From a very general perspective, when those guys come out, it seems to be moving in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing. And then when we look at your future card, strangely enough, honestly, you guys, it's like a repeat of what I just said. Because the third card that we pull for you guys in looking at the viability, the path going forward, or whatever it is they need to know about your, you know, your current business, that's the Two of Cups, which is also equally like, what? That's huge. Um, and so what that will indicate, at least going forward, if you're trying to either strengthen or kind of build up to make sure you guys are moving in alignment with your path, the Two of Cups in a future sense will be about harmony and partnership, harmony within the self first and foremost, because that's kind of the union of the Two of Cups that talks about in Tara, where it's actually about coming into peace and harmony within the self. But when we're approaching this from a standpoint of a partnership, a relationship, or especially a business, it's talking about making sure that you guys are in complete alignment with each other on, a, on multiple levels. Um, and then lastly, after that, when we look into kind of, is there anything else they would need to know going forward? We see the judgment card. Judgment is interesting in a future position because judgment will often tell us that while we may be moving in a really incredible direction, everything may suddenly shift, it might suddenly change. I mean, by Tuesday, it could be going in a whole different direction. So what that will tell you possibly within whatever you're creating, demoing, or about to put out for clients or whatever businesses you would be working with, judgment will tell us that within the context of that experience, we may have a very difficult or perceived as difficult kind of slap. It's like a very rapid rebirth. Suddenly our ego gets bruised. And as a result of that bruising, we suddenly improve or kind of pull into a bit of a Phoenix moment. So I might be over interpreting for you guys when we look at your business, but I would say the most important aspect of this is staying in harmony with yourselves, understanding that you guys are moving in a proper direction, but that in the near future, you might have some interesting experiences that are going to take you into a, hopefully a greater level of alignment. I don't know if that makes sense. I might've done that in a general way, but no, it, it's, yeah. I, it's absolutely in line with, with what's going on. And, um, you know, the, this leadership program that, that, that we're currently in and, and, you know, some things that we're developing, you know, in terms of who we are as leaders um, and realizing that, you know, we need to, to fully understand the why, you know, I, and, and, and it's very clear to us and, and it's very much in line. So, I mean, what you said is, yeah. I think is, is, is right on, is right on the money. I think it's interesting, um, yeah. you know, as, as Lisa's going through this and learning more about it, I think it's interesting, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, so much about each card, but it can mean something a little bit different. Oh, absolutely. Depending on what position it's drawn in. Because you, oh, you were very clear. Oh, getting this card in this position, you know, can mean this. But if we would have gotten it, you know, at a different it Spot can. It. it definitely can. Oftentimes I'll kind of look at the energy around it and the other cards around it that will indicate like, so we would pull a judgment card with a two of cups. And then, so we would say, well, what role would judgment have within the context of this, you know, business, you know, relationship. So uh, the positions have a huge effect on it. Um, but likewise, I would say with tarot at the same time, we have to be completely willing to utterly throw all of those rules out the door at any given moment, because it, it's, it's a very interesting process. To, to add just one more piece of information for you guys going to the future, oftentimes I'll just pull a random card at the end and be like, is there anything else these guys might mm -hmm. need to know? Anything we left out? And strangely enough, we got two cards. Strength, which is really freaking cool if you're undergoing a new process because it can tell you you can handle it. It could also tell you you may have to summon great strength to handle it, but that you got it. And then it'll also tell you in the distant future, we have this five of cups. 
which strangely enough almost appears to be the only semi-difficult or potentially weird piece of info that we get about you guys going forward because five of cups will indicate at least within the context of a partnership that one of you guys may have a tendency to stay very focused on certain aspects of things that aren't working were previously lost broken or otherwise or kind of might be messed up in the moment and so we see that in your kind of distant future and i would say they're just saying, hey, guys, just stay really focused on the aspect of whatever is working with your overall business plan. Because judgment, that guy can sometimes bring weird upsets in which we question everything. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just thought I would throw that out there in case there's some second guessing that good, occurs. Good to hear. Can I ask, because um, we were actually talking about this the, the, the other night, all three of us. Um, how do you pull your your cards you know do you just pull right off the top or are you just pulling random cards oh um there's a number of ways um i tend to shuffle for a while um i'll just shuffle the card several times i'll sort of ask the questions as i'm shuffling um which i'm literally doing right now i would say the way that i overall will do it is i'll do direct declaration or call out direct spirit guide consultation and for me that takes a form of i'm not using a specific spread but it's more about the dialogue that i create and then just kind of um, allowing a pattern to emerge so i do tend to have a spread where i'll do like a primary like representative you know we'll do a big influence and then i'll kind of just build a mini circle around the first two cards and say well what are the what's the energy going on as above so below what's happening in their day-to-day world what's happening underneath in their internal world so i'll do you know cards at the top cards at the bottom but even within that sort of lineup for me it's more about like the dialogue that uh, kind of shows up within you know like the images and everything so are you pulling are you it, well it, it didn't and it, i i think that i think that was great but and maybe i didn't phrase my 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 question correctly um how are you pulling off the deck i mean literally i mean after you oh, shuffle um, are of, you just right off the top yeah. Um, no, I'll kind of fan my fingers through and my fingers will stop at a certain point and I'll just pull out the card. It's just kind of like I'm trusting, I'm going in there and I'm like, <sighs> and then, boom, what comes out? Right, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. That seems to be a method that I'll use when I'm doing the general kind of pull in the beginning. And then oftentimes I'll be sitting with someone and we'll be having a conversation and I have this stack of cards next to me. And a cool thing that I like to do that was shown to me recently is we'll literally just pick up this deck and open a specific card, turn it over. And that will just indicate the energy of the moment. It's like a spur of the moment, random indicator. So there's a couple different ways. Sometimes it's from the middle. Sometimes it's off the top. Who knows? So Just intuitive. I would, I would, I, I would think so. I, I, I think that's one of the greatest things that we can kind of learn and use if we're trying to do intuitive work. And this was taught to me directly. The, there's this element that I think we can embrace, which is literally like jumping off a cliff. It's like an effort moment. We have to just go, whoa, here we go. And I think that's really where the magic happens. And really what that means is just trusting absolutely the information that you're given, which is very difficult to do at the beginning. It so. is because you're like, well, what if I pick the wrong card? Are you fan it out? Oh, and God. I want to pick this card. No, no, I'll pick that card. Wait, I don't know which card to pick. <laughs> oh, and you will. And you, you will. And, and, and as a result, you'll say crazy things. And this is part of the process of learning what our intuition is and identifying what's ours and what's theirs. And like, what does this mean for me? What is this feeling? And for everybody, it's different. But there really is like a level of trust that we have to embrace within ourselves and that's that can be a scary thing man it's, it's well wild. i i i feel like nicole's was was left out so i'm i'm i would assume i know nicole would just love a reading anytime but can you do a, no, a I, thursday I, I just, august 30th reading for nicole we could do it thursday yeah. august 30th oh my god okay we could do it thursday august 30th reading for nicole it's 2018 is it not let's see what <laughs> What are oh they God. what are they indicating for the body mind soul complex known as Nicole on this day? We'll just do a card here. Let's see. What does she need to know right now? <laughs> what does she need to know? Interesting. My goodness. Somebody wants you to stay connected today because I'm actually pulling two cards for you because the first one was a little grim. Um, actually, <laughs> well, well, you got the, you got the five of uh, 
you got the five of <laughs> I can't even say it. Uh, the five of cups, which is an interesting emotional card. And and we saw this guy a few minutes ago. Sometimes five of cups can be anything from a hormonal imbalance in the energy of the moment to at times a tendency to just be a little bit focused on something that's not working out. It's those moments when we are just keep looking at this thing on the whatever that is and we don't like it and we keep looking at it when really we can shift our focus to these other things right here that are very beautiful and nice so in a roundabout way the five of cups is about is about perspective focus and choosing to remain in an emotional state that's kind of uh higher vibrational than what's placed in front of us. And that may or may not apply to you today, Nicole, but I did pull another card for you. Cause I was like, what, what's that doing? And, and, and like the, for the, the next thing that comes out is the three of cups, which is such a contrast. <laughs> it's like a total contrast. And the three of cups for you guys who don't know, it's all about like celebration. It's about friendship. It's about, you know, like positive vibes within a group. So I don't know what that means for you, uh, but it's definitely there. So there you go. No, it all makes sense at all. It, it actually is very, makes a lot of sense for what's happened this morning. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, stay uh, connected, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So yeah, there you yeah. go. Oh my gosh. So um, I wanted to ask you another question and I don't know why it's just slipped my mind. Um. I know, right? It, it totally happens. I oh, you. okay. No, I, I did want to ask you this. Um, you also do parasitic yes. removals. Yes. Okay. How did you get into that? Oh, very specifically, I can tell you. Uh, my friend Eric Rains, actually. I know, I know you guys we have know had Eric. him on the he show. Was on our show. Amazing. He was oh, great. Yeah. He was the activator for me in this sense. And I think he's been this for a lot of people in uh, the communities, especially for me, which I think in our case goes to a, a lot of past life interaction. But I, I met him in 2015 at the Secret Space Program Conference in Mount Shasta. And it was one of those things where I literally met this guy and we were like, oh, we kind of know each other. And he did some work on me over that weekend that literally turned my life in a whole other direction. It was one of the missing pieces following my initial awakening experience where I had this opportunity to have what I would call these sort of like obstruction valves or this sort of implanting etheric device that gets placed in our body as a result of early life trauma. And as odd as it sounds, these are kind of blockages or cutoff valves by my view that gets placed in, in around our heart chakra in between the heart and the throat. And what that does is that has a big impact on how we express ourselves, how we process emotion, how we allow our emotions to be expressed, how we hold on to um, difficult emotion, how we open the heart, all sorts of things like that. And so what he did was he literally removed this blockage from my energy body. And it was so intense that I walked around this campsite for about 24 hours after that, just crying. And I didn't know why I was crying. I didn't have an emotion. It was as if this valve or this bubble had burst inside my body. And this, this, this emotional liquid had to drain out that had been pent up for years and years. And so after I had had that experience, um, you know, I sat with it. And months later, I began to do Qigong and I started getting in touch with him. And he kind of coached me over, you know, like many months of walking through like removing blockages and implants and things that were in my own body. And within that process, um, I just kind of started to step into what it was that I'm doing now. And it was not easy, man. It was like this trial that I, I really had to understand who and what I was in this life. And so when I talk about the phenomenon of like removing implants, removing energy blocks, um, I can tell you that it's a process that I had to go through myself in understanding what that was. But um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but that was how I got started. How is that... Um translated into your work like when you're when you're working with people to right. heal do any sort of healing um, well i would say in working with eric in uh, other retreats and the workshops that we've done he's really good at teaching people about how to awaken move and open up their body's own electrical field or your chi or that vital essence 
So I would say within the context of the work that I am doing now, um, I'm using that golden frequency that I picked up in those activations. And we call it the golden frequency because it often takes the form of this golden wave of light that we use to move through the body and our energy centers. It just kind of like detaches anything that doesn't uh, belong. I ended up using what I took from that and kind of making it into my own processes. Um, my own process. And so what I do now is kind of a three-part process. We involve a bit of a tarot reading in which we kind of diagnose and look at the greater themes of your current physical you know, life. Um, we'll use a bit of hypnotherapy, which I think we did a little bit of with you, Nicole, yesterday, in which we do kind of a hypnotic induction where within the course of the whole clearing, I'll bring people down to about a theta or delta state. What happens within that brain wavelength is that version of you, you know, in the 3D realm kind of goes into a state of sleep or mild in consciousness. And what happens when we do that is anything that's not you, any kind of like foreign bits, any uh, emotion, implants, attachments, anything not native to you tends to bob up to the surface like a buoy on the surface of the water. So we go through a hypnotic induction. We, and then from there, we kind of walk through awakening the chi, breathing through energy centers when we're in that state. And so I would like to say I use the stuff that I picked up through him and that energy attachment thing to kind of uh, piece a whole integrative model together. At least that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah, yeah. no, totally. Now, like when you are removing some of these implants and stuff, do you, cause I have a friend who does this work. He does excellent work. Um, did you ever receive any sort of attacks? Oh, doing yeah. It? yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> that's the thing that happens to a lot of us. I think when we sort of pop up on this etheric radar and like, what I mean by that is I think when we, it's, it's almost as if you can create sort of waves on the etheric plane. And, 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 and that sounds kind of strange to say, but for a lot of us, as we go through these activations, moving this energy, encountering people that may have a higher dimensional entity attached or just overall like, you know, ET or like, you know, weird activity. It's like we pop up on this radar and the way I describe it, it, it's a bit like being a bonfire in a very dark forest. And as a result, a lot of things are going to come around that flame. And I think if you're, you're, your own sort of energetic like condition is sound it's as if those you know moths in the metaphorical sense will kind of burn up in your own sort of energy field but oftentimes bigger things will come around and i've had strange experiences as a result of that i believe in january of this year i was involved in the first car crash of my entire life that was entirely not of my own doing and a very random event that happened in my opinion it was the result of some uh, you know possibly you know I would guess we could just say dark forces or an authorization to be attacked, something like that, because it has happened. Um, it has happened. For me, most of those kind of negative kind of residues, attacks, or otherwise kind of weights that are placed on me as a result of working with people almost always come in the form of an emotion. Other practitioners mm -hmm. I've noticed tend to get sick. They will have, you know, pains. They will have other events in their life. For some reason, Matthew's primary method of like weakness or when it comes to an, an astral or, you know, like whatever that is, has always been emotional. So I would say, yes, I have had that in a number of cases. Yeah. Lisa and I both ex experienced it um, when we both had um, either contracts broken with negative entities or implants removed mm. from our etheric bodies where we we're instantly attacked like that, that evening or the next day um, because they're not very happy about it. And I remember Brian and Lisa and I, and I can't remember if we said this on the show, so I apologize for audience if we have, um, but we were all in a hotel room sleeping and it was the night that Lisa, that morning, Lisa, you had those, that the implants removed, right. a device from your mm -hmm. etheric body and that night I Brian said I was saying no in my sleep and I remember seeing a dark shadow hovering over their bed oh wow and it was very demonic and uh, it scared the crap out of it me it was a weird oh, yeah. night <laughs> it was a weird night <laughs> there was no excessive alcohol involved either no not at all <laughs> okay I, I'd like to say that I actually was not drunk that night um <laughs> everyone else I was had, i had stopped drinking i can't say that yeah you two were. you two were does it always matter yeah. yeah 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 they love but to I was attack sober me enough when i drink that... well yeah, yeah that, that's dude, really... that's how it goes for a lot of people that's one of the Weakness. biggest gateways into some sort of thing man that's yeah your guard is down it truly is mm -hmm. but yeah 
if you're just tuned out like me, guess what? No attacks. <laughs> Nobody is <laughs> you, looking at me. You are getting attacked through Lisa. You're watching her get attacked, uh, so they're attacking you that uh, way. Whatever. That is somewhat that is somewhat possible on a certain level. There are a lot of individuals. I've noticed them. We've all seen them. Brian, you're probably one of them. They seem to be impervious to whatever that level of interference mm-hmm. is. It absolutely happens. Um, and I think that's both a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. But as a result, we tend to partner up or we tend to be in close proximity to other people that may have a heightened ability in that sense. So on a certain level, yeah, they can affect our loved ones through us or they can affect us through our loved ones and vice versa. It makes total sense. We did a, a, yeah. a show yesterday. We recorded one and Brian had his Akashic Records read. But she was just talking about how we Brian and I have paired up. Like his his role is to keep me grounded and then I help like kind of pull him up. We're just polar opposites when it comes to oh, I love that. where we're at and yeah. we completely balance each other out. I'm 3D, she's 5D, together we're 4D. There you go. <laughs> you want to know what's interesting about that, you know, and I just realized this because I'm looking at Lisa's notes from yesterday. She said there were three numbers that came up for us and it yes. was 534. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Or it was that was specifically for me five three four. But it's it's interesting that she also mentioned this three D five D, and then I I jokingly yeah. averaged them and said, oh, we're together four D. So but those are the same three numbers. Look at you being all aware of your numbers now. Yeah, I learned them in <laughs> kindergarten. Okay, to be perfectly honest, okay, I've been pulling tarot cards, and and Brian sometimes sits there with me. But when I pull them, he's the one that immediately sees something in them and says something. Ah, uh, <laughs> nice. See, it's happening and he doesn't even know. Way more intuitive <laughs> than you would like to admit. I have a feeling. I'm just yeah. wicked yeah. smart. <laughs> that could yeah, be it. Yeah. Well, like everyone's going to have their own method of like discerning this information. And I think that we're caught up right now. Well, not everyone, but a lot of us at certain times will get caught up in trying to discern or understand or discover or know whatever that strand of intuitive guidance is for us. And so I think a lot of people, they'll get this knowing, they'll get it in an organic, clear cognizance way that maybe Brian, you just like, oh yeah, I just know. There's nothing mystical about it. My body just tells me. So you would have that information coming to you through a whole different you know, method than say Lisa or me or Nicole. And for each of us is going to be sure. different. So what I notice when I'm teaching people about this is we tend to get caught up in other people's methods of discerning and we'll think, oh, I need to see it or I'll feel like this but to me you're absolutely like tapped into that you know like for yourself at least definitely yeah <laughs> it's just on the his logical mind yeah um okay so matthew thank you so much for being yeah, on the you. show Great guest. Thanks. tell our audience tell our audience um because i know you do live facebook readings like once or twice a month yeah um how can people reach you, find you, get involved with you? Yeah, so the number one way right now is usually through Facebook, and that's through my uh, Facebook uh, um, a profile. I, I also have a Facebook business page, which is called Remember Your Mission. Um, and I do – right now I've been doing like a couple times a month um, uh, like a tarot and energy reading thing on Facebook Live, which has been very, very good. And I'm, I'm going to continue to do that. Um, for people that wanted to book me for an intuitive reading or um, a clearing, you can reach me through Facebook at this time. I do have a website, but it's, it's just not online yet, and I'm continually dropping uh, the ball in that sense. So I'm hoping that will be there in the near future. Well, but, let me um, remind you yeah, something regarding your website. Remember your mission. That might yeah. be to, it <laughs> might be to make your, your website. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, you guys you guys can find me on Facebook primarily. Um, and yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much. It's truly an okay. honor. We'd love to, to have you back. So. I yeah, you. yeah, you're great. And then um I'm gonna leave your Facebook a link to your profile in the actual show notes so people can easily find you. Oh, thank and, you. And uh, I highly suggest to our audience, if you're interested in tarot, if you're interested in energy clearing. I highly recommend Matthew to be did great work with me yesterday. And you also did a reading for me a couple of weeks ago that was so spot on and exactly what I needed to hear. Uh, it was very helpful and helped me navigate something in my life that needed a little bit of extra help. So um, just to our audience, I definitely stand behind your work. And so I highly suggest 
Thank you so Matthew. much. Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. So you're great. And um, thanks so much for coming on and uh, look forward to watching some more of your readings on Facebook. Oh, thank you so much. It's such an honor like to be here with you guys. It truly is. Thanks. So thank you. And- yeah. And this episode is going to be coming out um, next Thursday, which is August the 6th. So Lisa, what is the code that people can use? Because we ha- there's going to be a 20% off in our t-shirt store. And I forgot to mention at the beginning. Please hold. We have yeah. to find it. I'll give you hold the music. La, 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 la. <laughs> we, we always edit this part mm-hmm. out. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not sure. I, I, it now. I, the way that I heard Lisa say it is I think if they just buy it between a certain date, they get a discount. No, I think there is a code. Oh, like, okay. I, I have to find it. It was like if you, you shop on September 5th and 6th, you get a you get a discount. Okay, so for... So for our audience, um, if there is a code, I'm going to leave it in the show notes um, because if you're listening to this episode, the day it comes out, then you'll have an opportunity to get the t-shirt. I'm sorry, I found it. It's NE20, A-N-Y-2-0, September 5th and 6th, 20% off. Awesome. So if anyone's interested, you can use that code. And um, also, if you guys have any questions, any topic ideas, guests that you would like us to bring on the show, please send it into our email, info at enlightenup.us. And if you need any more information about us, please head on over to our website, enlightenup.us. Uh, and we're so happy to be here and come speak with you all every week and bring on fabulous guests like Matthew. Thanks again, Matthew. And to all of our guests, we will be back again with you next week.